Hey everyone, this is Aria, and in this tutorial, I want to show you how I made this animation in Blender 2.8, getting this result at the end. And if there's a good response, I'll make a second part showing you how I did the lighting, camera work, and this giant glass exploding pin at the end. So the first thing we need to do is open up a new scene, select everything, and hit delete. Shift A to add in a plane, and then S10 to scale it by 10. We're going to hit S, Y, 1, 0 again to scale it on the Y axis, and this will be the base for our lane. Hit Shift A to add in a cylinder, R, X, 90 to rotate 90 degrees on the X axis, and then hit the decimal key on your numpad to zoom in. Hit the one key on your numpad to go into front orthographic view, and then click here and go to edit mode, or you can hit tab on your keyboard. Now we want to get rid of the top half of the cylinder, so we're going to select, click over here, and then select everything, but you can see that we're missing the vertices at the back. So what we need to do is go into X-ray mode, and then we're going to just select everything again, and hit delete vertices. Hit A on your keyboard to select the remaining vertices and then GX to move on the X axis and we're gonna line up the edge of this with the pivot point. Hit tab on your keyboard to go back into object mode and then GX to move the cylinder into place. Hit the decimal key to zoom in and then we can hit R, Y, minus 20 to rotate on the Y axis. Next, you want to scale on the y-axis, so hit S, Y, and type in 100 to match the length of the lane. Toggle out of x-ray mode, right-click, and shade smooth. And so now you can see that we've got our first gutter. So we need to make a second one, but instead of creating it again, what we can do is go to the modifiers properties, click this, and go to mirror. You can see now that it's doing something a little bit weird, and the reason for that is if we hit the end key, you can see here, all of these numbers here are representing uh, the changes that we made to the cylinder and they're affecting the mirror. So what we need to do is get these back to zero and these back to one. If we just set these back uh, manually right now, you can see that things will change and that's not what we want. So what we can do is click on the cylinder, hit control A, and then we can reset all the transforms and it will keep all the changes that we've made. Now you can see everything's zeros and ones and our mirror is working properly. Next, hit Shift A to add a cube. Hit the decimal key to zoom in. And then we can hit GX to move it just over to the edge here. And then we're gonna scale it on the Z, so S, Z, and then just bring your mouse in until it's about 0.7 or 8, that should work. G, Z to move it up. And so now we wanna scale it to the same length of the lane, so hit S, Y, and then type in 100, and then hit Enter. So now we wanna subdivide um, this rail here, but if we add a subdivision surface now, you can see that we're going to get a result that's not really what we want. So we need to add some more vertices, so get rid of that. And then what we can do is hit tab to go into edit mode. And then we're going to add some vertices close to all the edges here. So click control R and you can see that it brings up this guide kind of wherever you put your mouse. So what we want to do is click and drag and add edge loops near to the edges of our mesh here. So we're going to do it on all of the edges here, one here here and then two more so let's just zoom out control R and then just bring this all the way down here and one more by the way if you accidentally click and you lose um, the ability to move that you can hit G and then G again on your keyboard and then just drag your mouse right there that should be good and the final loop cut that we want to add is right in the middle so let's just zoom in here a bit hit control R and click right there and then just hit escape. We also want to scale this loop cut so that we get a bit of a rounded um, form to it. So we can hit S and then Z and then we can just pull our mouse away from the center like this and that's gonna work. So now hit tab to go back into object mode, click this list here and go to subdivision surface and set it to something like three. Right click and shade smooth. And now you can see that we've got a nice rounded edge to our rails here. Okay, so now we want to mirror this to the other side again. So let's click this and go to mirror and control A and reset the transforms. And there we go. Awesome. So now we've got the base for our laneway. The next thing we want to do is create the bowling ball. So shift A to add a new UV sphere. And then we're going to click this arrow here and change the segments to 64 and the rings to 32. Click on the sphere and then we can hit GZ to just move it up hit the decimal key to zoom in. Now hit tab on your keyboard to go into edit mode and we want to be on face select uh, mode so you can either click here or hit three on your keyboard. By the way, if you hit one, two, and three, it will cycle through vertices, edge, and face select. 
So now what we want to do is select the faces that we're going to use for the holes. So let's just do groups of four here like this, this, and then down here. And that should be good. So this method that I'm using for the bowling ball, um, I learned actually from a different tutorial. And what they did is they used an add-on. So go to preferences, edit preferences, and go to add-ons and search for loop. And make sure that uh, loop tools is activated by clicking this right here. And then what we can do is go to edit here and click this little arrow and click circle. And you can see now that we've got more circular geometry to work with. So the next step is pretty important. Hit E and then hit enter right away. And then you want to hit E again. And then you can drag your mouse in like this until you've got a good depth right there. And there we go. So now what we can do is tab to go back into object mode. We can add a subdivision surface and set it to three. Right click and shade smooth. And now we've got the base for our bowling ball. Great, so let's move that aside by hitting G and then X to move it over here. And the next thing we need to do is um, build our bowling pins. So for this one, we're gonna bring in a reference photo. And the photo that I'm using is just um, the first one on Google search of a side view of a bowling pin. So this one right here. Click that and save it to somewhere on your computer. And then when you're ready, hit a shift A and go to image reference, and you're gonna load in the reference. And then what you wanna do, cause it kind of loads it based on the way your perspective is facing. So hit N and go to item. And then we just wanna set this to 90 and these two rotations to zero. And now we can hit G and Z to move the reference into place and then S to scale it. And that should work just fine. So now we want to hit shift A and we're going to add it in a circle and then we're going to hit S to scale it to about the size of the base of the pin here. And then we're going to hit one on the numpad to go into front orthographic again. And we hit G Z just to move it into place. And so now what we need to do is go into edit mode. So hit tab and then we're going to go to edge select. So you can either click here or hit two on your keyboard. And this might take a few minutes to do, but it's super easy. We're just going to work with um, a couple um, keys here. So we're just going to hit E. And you can see now that we're extruding those edges. And if we hit Z, it will lock to the Z axis. And we want to go just in small little sections like this and then click. And then if we hit S, we can scale to the width of the pin. And then we're just going to continue that all the way up the pin until we reach the top. By the way, when you get to this point here, just make sure that you line up the loop cut with the red edge here, and then just click as close as possible like that, because we're going to utilize that later when we um, add the material for this bowling pin. And then when you get to the top, just make sure you hit F to fill the final piece there. Okay, so now that we're done modeling the bowling pin, we're going to go into um, object mode by hitting tab, and we're going to add a subdivision surface, set it to three, and then we're going to right click and shade smooth. And so now we're going to add the base material. So click the materials properties, click new, and we're going to just set the base color to full white and bring down the roughness just a little bit, and that should be good. Make sure you've got the pin selected and then hit tab to go into edit mode and click this toggle here to go into x-ray view. And what we want to do is click the face select here or hit three on our keyboard and just click and drag so we have these faces. Shift, click and drag so we have those as well. And then just double check, make sure you've got everything. And then what we can do is click this little plus icon here and go to assign and then click new, change this to red. If we go into look dev mode, you can see that we've got our base material set up for the pin. So what you can do is um, add some clear coat if you want to make it look a little bit more glossy, lower the roughness, and yeah, that's looking good. So click the reference image and hit delete. We don't need that anymore. And so now we're getting a lot closer. So what we want to do is zoom out a bit and then click and drag the lane, uh, the gutters and the rails and hit G, Y, and then we're going to move it just closer here. So oh, let's just go like this and that will work better. There we go. Now we can hit seven on our keyboard to get a top view of our scene here. Click this. Actually, let's move the ball out of the way. 
And then we can select this pin and then hit Shift D to duplicate. Shift select these two, Shift D again. And now you can see that we've got our completed bowling pins. Okay, so we only have a couple things left to create. So hit Shift A and go to Cube. G Z to move it up. And then we're gonna scale the cube um, on the X by 15. Scale on the Y by 10. And scale on the Z by five. And then we can move it into place. Great, so now we need to attach the rails with this thing here. So what we're gonna do is hit tab to go into edit mode and make sure we're on vertex selection here and select those ones, hit E and just drag out here. And then we can hit G, Z to bring it up. And then we're gonna hit R and X to rotate on the X axis till we're flat. And then G, Z one more time to bring it up. All right, that's looking good. So the last thing we want to do is just add in uh, another loop cut here just to fix the geometry a bit. Just bring it down here and then we can hit R, X. And then we can scale that down a bit and scale it out on the X. There we go. Perfect. Great, so now that we've got everything built, we can start adding our textures. So let's um, start with the easy ones. So go here and add a new texture to the rails and we'll just set this to this color here bring down the roughness and you can add a clear coat as well if we want then click the gutters here click new change the color to something darker and then we're going to bring the roughness down by a lot and you're probably seeing some kind of this green reflection here and the reason why is look dev mode here they just throw on an automatic hdri so you can change this if you want um, i'm just going to leave it for now, it's just to give you an idea of what the reflections will look like with a proper lighting setup. Let's click this cube here. And before we um, give it a material, what we want to do is just add some more loop cuts on here the same way we did with the rails. So we're going to control R and click and drag. Like that. And then just here as well. And there we go. Then we can hit tab and modifiers, subdivision, surface. And right click, shade smooth. Now if we go to the materials tab, let's just add a basic material for this one as well. That's looking good. Maybe bring the roughness up. Something like that should work. So now that we've done the basic textures, we want to go into the shading tab just to finish off um, the last few textures here. So click the lane and hit new and just zoom out here a bit. And you can get the textures that I used for this scene um, from cc0textures.com. They're all free. And I did 4K, but you could probably just do 2K. That should be, that should be just fine. And then once you've got the textures downloaded to your computer, what you can do is just bring in the color, the normal, and the roughness. And then we're gonna click color to base color, color to roughness for the roughness. And for the bump map, we're gonna hit the shift A and go to vector and then click bump. Click this here, color to height and normal to normal. And then we can set this to 0.1. And let's also give this a clear coat as well. And that's looking pretty good. The planks are looking a little bit large. So there's a couple options that you can do to fix that. Um, the first is if you go to edit preferences and search for node, um, this is a built-in add-on, but just make sure it's enabled. Then you can select any one of these nodes and hit Control T. It will bring up these um, coordinate and mapping nodes. You want to hook these into the vector of each. And then what you can do is you can scale these to two or something like that. And you can see that's working out. There's also another option. If you delete these, if you'd rather do it by using the UVs, you can go to UV editing and then just zoom out here. Make sure that you've got um, the vertices selected by hitting A, and then you can click this here 
And if you hit S to scale, you can see that it's doing the, the same thing. It's just scaling the UV. So you can use whichever method you like, whatever um, is easier for you. And then the final thing that we want to do is texture the bowling ball. So let's just move it closer to us here and we can click new. And I got this texture as well from CC Zero Textures. So just go to their website and you can search marble 006. And then when you've got those textures ready, you can drag in the color again, normal and roughness as well. Okay, and then we're gonna hook the color to the color. Roughness to roughness. And then shift A to add a bump. Color to height and normal to normal. Like that, okay. Oops. Hit the decimal key um, to zoom in if you're, if you're kind of like all over the place, that just helps a lot. So there's a couple more things that we wanna change. We wanna change this to metallic. Let's give it a clear coat as well. And then a couple more things we can do. Shift A, go to color and add a hue saturation node. And then put the saturation to something like 10. And if you click through here, you can get some really nice looking colors. So that's gonna work for us. Perfect. So let's go back to layout. And that's basically it. Everything has got its um, base material to it. The last thing we need to do is just create the rigid body simulation. So click the ground plane here, go to the physics properties, and let's start with the easy stuff. So rigid body and passive. Then click the rails and we're gonna do the same thing, rigid body, passive, and same with the gutters as well, rigid body and passive. The next thing we wanna do is click one of the bowling pins and hit the decimal key so we can zoom in. And we're gonna add a rigid body active. We're gonna leave um, this stuff the same. And we want to do that to the rest of the pins. So you could click each one of these and add it one at a time, but there is um, an easier way. So if you click this first one here um, that we already changed, you can then shift select the rest and then go object, rigid body and copy from active. And now you can see that each of these has got the same properties. So now if we hit play, you can see that there's a bit of movement there. They're interacting with the, um, the ground plane here. So the last thing we need to do is just um, simulate the bowling ball. So click the bowling ball here, and then we're just gonna move over here to the other side of our lane. Click GY to bring the bowling ball all the way over here. Um, decimal to center. And we can just kind of place this wherever we like here. And then before we simulate this, we actually want to animate it first just to give it some kind of momentum or else it'll just fall onto the, well, in this case, it'll fall into nothing. But if it was here, it would just sort of fall down and sit there. So we want to give it sort of a push. So we're going to click on the ball and hit I to bring up the keyframe menu. And then we're going to click this option here, location, rotation, scale, keyframe that. And then we're going to go to frame 10 and then hit G, Y, and we'll bring it right to here and hit I and we'll keyframe it again. Go back to frame one and what we can do now is add the rigid body simulation and what we want to do is tell blender that we are animating this so we're going to click that and at frame six we will keyframe that and then we're going to go one frame more turn this off and keyframe it again so now you can see that if we zoom out and hit play we've got a working simulation. So I'm noticing that our ball is not very heavy. So what we can do, go back to frame one, let's change this to 10, and then we should have a larger impact. Let's hit play now. There you go. So the pins are kind of falling a little bit funny. So let's just zoom in here, go back to frame one. And so what we can do is if we select all of these pins, you'll notice that the um, pivot point is at the bottom because that's where we started um, creating the pin with the circle. So what we can do is right click and set origin to geometry. And now we should get a better result with the simulation. So let's hit play. And there you go. Now you can see that they're falling um, a lot better. Okay, so that's everything. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give me a like and subscribe. And if there's a good response, I will create a second part to this um, and show you how I did the lighting and the camera movements and all that stuff. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.